Hi guys, Story Recaps here, today, I am going to explain, a 2019 American horror, mystery thriller film, called, Us. Spoilers ahead, watch out, and take care. Santa Cruz, in the year 1986. Addie is out with her folks at the Santa Cruz beach, boardwalk for a carnival. She takes a look around the carnival, observing the many activities that are taking place around her. Her mother is on her way to the bathroom, and her father is playing a video game. When Addie is left alone, she goes for a walk to see what she can find. She visits a beach near the carnival before entering a funhouse. The lights go out, and Addie finds herself trapped in a house of mirrors. She unexpectedly runs into her doppelganger. In the present day, a four-person family travels to Santa Cruz, California. Addie is now an adult, the mother of two children, Zora and Jason. They arrive at Addie's childhood house in Santa Cruz after a long trek. Her husband, Gabe Wilson, insists on going to the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk that night for fun during lunch. Addie still remembers what that night at the funhouse did to her. She is haunted by flashbacks of the encounter and her rehabilitation, which included a period when she was unable to speak. She doesn't want to go back, but Gabe is able to persuade her. After that, the family heads to the beach. They're having a good time in their automobile on their way to the beach. Jason's magical fire ring is mocked by Zora. They see paramedics carrying away a body of an elderly man with blood on his chest at one point. As they arrive at the beach, they run into their friends, Josh Tyler, Kitty Tyler, and their twin kids, Jason goes to the bathroom as the two families are relaxing. On his way back, he is startled to discover a man who resembles the dead man they had seen earlier. When Addie notices Jason is absent, she becomes quite concerned. They decide to return home when she finally finds Jason. Addie tells Gabe about her childhood encounter with her doppelganger at night. Gabe, on the other hand, does not appear to believe her. The lights go out as they converse. Jason appears out of nowhere and informs his parents that a family is standing in their driveway. When they glance out the window, they notice a family of four standing there. Zora also emerges. Gabe walks out to order them to leave, while Addie calls the cops. The family does not respond and simply stands there. Gabe grabs a baseball bat and returns to the field. They begin walking towards him this time. He comes inside and locks the doors because he feels threatened. Outside, Though, people discover a concealed key, and enter. The family is taken aback when they realize the invaders are their doppelgangers. The family is cornered in their own homeroom, and they are threatening them with scissors. Jason's doppelganger is Pluto, a fire-loving sadist, Zora's doppelganger is Umbri, Gabe's doppelganger is Abraham, and the group leader appears to be Addie's doppelganger, Red. She is the only one who can communicate, and her voice is guttural and raspy. They are known as the Tethered, according to Red, because they are the Wilson family's shadow. The linked share a soul with their doppelgangers and have spent their entire lives as their shadows. They finally decided to untether themselves. Red tells them a story about a girl in her shadow, referring to herself and Addie as the girl in her shadow. Red had to eat raw-blooded bunnies while Addie ate delicious and warm food. Addie was given soft toys to play with, whilst Red was given sharp and cold toys to play with. Addie met Gabe, her adoring prince, but Red was forced to marry Abraham due to his ties to Gabe. Red gave birth to a nasty monster, Umbri, while Addie gave birth to a lovely daughter, Zora. Finally, she claims that while Addie had doctors operate on her and assist with her birth, Red had to do everything alone. As a result, they've emerged from the shadows to claim their lives. Following Red's explanation, Addie is forced to tie herself to the table. Gabe is dragged to the other room by Abraham. Pluto forces Jason to play with him while Umbri chases Zora through the streets. The intruders intend to split up the Wilsons, harass them, and murder them. In a small chamber, Pluto and Jason are playing with fire. When Jason sees Pluto's disfigured face for the first time, Umbri is on the lookout for Zora. A man intervenes just as she is about to stab her with a pair of scissors. As Umbri stabs the man to death, Zora flees. Meanwhile, Abraham strikes Gabe, knocking him out. He then throws him into the boat in a rubbish bag. Gabe cuts a small hole in the sack and notices Abraham's baseball bat. The boat comes to a complete stop. Gabe jumps out of the bag and swings the bat at Abraham, knocking him out and sending him into the river. Gabe, however, falls into the water, as soon as the boat starts moving. Gabe notices the boat dock and climbs to the top. 
Abraham then assaults him from behind, but he throws him back to the river, where he is killed. Gabe then steers the boat in the direction of the house. Jason, notices that Pluto imitates his actions. He uses his fire ring to distract Pluto, allowing him to escape and lock him within the room. The noise is heard by Red. She enters and opens the door for Pluto. Jason is nowhere to be found. She then tears the head off of Addie's old stuffed toy. Even though Addie is still bound to the table, she spots a fireplace poker nearby. She grabs it and manages to liberate herself from the restraints. She then locates Jason and flees the house. Zora is discovered on their driveway. Gabe arrives with his boat at precisely the perfect moment. The family jumps on it right away and manages to get away. Meanwhile, Kitty is at home with her family when she hears a noise. She instructs Josh to investigate. Their doppelgangers emerge out of nowhere and slaughter the family in a matter of seconds. The Wilsons come at that precise moment. Addie enlists the assistance of Josh's duplicate. She discovers it isn't him as he opens the door for her and smacks him in the head with the fireplace poker. It, on the other hand, causes him little or no harm. Addie is also dragged in by others from the inside. Gabe and the kids are outside when Josh, the imposter, approaches them. Gabe runs in the opposite direction from the youngsters to divert Josh's attention. The children then proceed to search the house for their mother. As a weapon, Zora chooses a golf club. They walk upstairs after hearing Addie screaming and find the twins' lifeless bodies on the floor. While the look-alike twins play in the background. One of them suddenly emerges in front of Zora. She swings the bat at her, knocking her down the bars. They are then assaulted by the other twin. Zora also kills her after a brief fight. Kitty's doppelganger is in the bedroom, tying Addie to the bed. Meanwhile, Gabe sprints to the boat, followed by Josh. Gabe then kills Josh by shooting him with a flare gun and attacking him. Through the glass, Kitty sees Gabe murder Josh. Zora hits her from behind, but Kitty manages to avoid it. She's about to stab Zora, when Jason intervenes by striking Kitty in the head. The Wilsons sat in the living room, trying to make sense of what is going on. All nine of the lines are busy. They see this on the television and understand it's occurring all throughout the country. According to reports, the doppelgangers are emerging from the sewers with scissors as weapons. They are indiscriminately stabbing people to death all around the country. They notice the doubles joining hands after killing their counterparts to form a gigantic human chain. It's as though they've been putting this together for months. Addie chooses to drive along the coast and escape to Mexico because the entire country is under siege. Umbri appears in front of the family as they get into the automobile. Umbri gets onto the automobile as Zora tries to attack her with it. Zora then abruptly stops the car, sending her flying into a tree and impaling her on a branch. After that, the family exits the site. On their way, they come upon multiple dead bodies. A automobile blazing in the middle of the road comes to a halt in front of them. Pluto, Jason's double, appears there. While the others stay in the car, Addie walks out to attack him. Jason quickly recognizes that he is being tricked. Pluto intends to set fire to the family's automobile. He tells the rest of the group to go. Jason remembers that the doppelgangers reflect their movements, so he starts walking backwards before Pluto can light the match. Pluto begins to move backwards as a result of this. Pluto eventually reaches the blazing car and burns to death. However, Red emerges from her hiding place and kidnaps Jason. Addie pursues them. She notices a large human chain of doppelgangers crossing the shore. She then arrives at the location she first visited all those years ago. She wanders around it and discovers a door that leads to a lower level. A rabbit emerges through the door. She descends and discovers a vast space. It appears to be a top secret location. She exits the elevator and walks down a long corridor with multiple rooms on either side. Many rabbits dart throughout the corridor. She discovers Red in a room that appears to be a classroom. On the board, a lookalike human chain is drawn. Addie inquires about her son's whereabouts. Red begins blabbering about how they, too, are human. She then reveals their existence's secret. The tethered, also known as the shadows, are manufactured beings developed by the government to manipulate the originals on the surface for their own twisted objectives, according to Red. The goal of the experiment was to create clones who were linked to individuals through their souls. The goal of this endeavor was to use clones to manipulate people all over America like puppets. The experiments, however, failed, 
and the tethered were left underground for years, mindlessly imitating their counterparts' actions and subsisting on rabbit flesh. Faith had brought Red and Addy together that night. The other instantly noticed that Red was not like the others. As a result, they chose her to be their leader. They had been planning this for years. They want vengeance on their opponents, but more importantly, they desire to make a statement about their own existence. As a result, they made the decision to construct a human chain. Addie's parents had enrolled her in a ballet dance class after her meeting with Red. As a result, Red used to dance and imitate Addie. Dancing, she claims, was the reason she was spared. Then they begin to battle in a balletic manner. All of Addie's attacks are gracefully deflected by Red. In this conflict, she has the upper hand. Red dashes along the corridors, trailed by Addie, who holds the fireplace poker in her hand. Their quarrel becomes increasingly heated, and Red jumps at Addie from behind with a pair of scissors. Addie stabs her with the fireplace poker and kills her before she can reach her. Red whistles the same tune Addie had heard the first time she met Red as she is on the point of death. This irritates Addie, so she strangles Red and murders her maniacally with her handcuffs. She then discovers Jason hiding in a nearby locker. They both exit the building and see Gabe and Zora hiding in an ambulance. The family then gets into the same ambulance and drives away. We have a flashback of Addie's first meeting with Red as she drives. Addie was in direct contact with Red. Red choked her and knocked her out. She had then hauled her down to her room and bound her to the bed with handcuffs. Red dressed up like Addie and stepped into her shoes in the real world. Addie's parents brought their daughter's doppelganger home that night. This helps to explain why Red is the only tethered who can speak and think independently, and so leads the insurrection. Red's voice has been harmed because her twin choked her, causing damage to her larynx and a harsh, guttural tone to her voice. This also explains why Addie was unable to communicate as a child after being discovered at the beach. Shadows have no idea how to communicate. Addie's shadow grows up and forgets she's a clone. She learns to speak and becomes a normal person, capable of love and laughter. The film closes with the doppelgangers forming a several mile long human chain. Subscribe and turn on the notifications. We daily upload videos like this.